Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to be talking about dragons. No, not the dragons of medieval lore, nor the dragons of Skyrim, not even the dragon of Dojima Kazuma Kiryu, but at least that one is sort of tangentially related to today's subject. Today we're going to be talking about a Japanese so-called divine dragon aircraft project that occurred just before World War II ended in their preparation for a defense of the Japanese homeland that ultimately never came. Despite the mental image the name Divine Dragon may give, these aircraft are probably the exact opposite of that image. This is the Mizuno Jinryu and or the Shinryu. We'll get into my phrasing of the two names in a bit, but first we have to set the stage. In June 1944, the military situation for Japan was beginning to look dire. While their surprise attacks in late 1941 had garnered them a vast amount of territory in the Pacific, they had well since lost the initiative and were on the defensive against ever-encroaching Allied forces. The Marshall Islands were lost in February 1944, and Allied strikes to the Mariana Islands, Palau Islands, and New Guinea put ever-increasing stress on the Japanese military. To make matters worse, on June 15th, the first bombing raid on Japan since 1942 would occur, as a wave of B-29 bombers flying in from Chengdu, China, would strike the Imperial Iron and Steelworks in Kyushu. From here on, B-29 bombers would be a continuous threat to the Japanese mainland, and the threat of a potential land invasion grew by the day. In an effort to combat both of these, a rapidly climbing interceptor and an anti-tank, anti-ship aircraft were both needed. While the B-29 threat was the more current threat, the design for the latter threat would appear first. In November 1944, the Japanese Navy Aviation Bureau began seriously looking into aircraft that could take out tank and ship alike. In their minds, this aircraft, hiding in caves or just sat on the shoreline, would rapidly take to the skies through rocket boosters and would glide towards their target. These gliders were envisioned to be so-called shimpu aircraft, meaning they were what we know as kamikazes. They would be loaded up with around 100 kilos or 220 pounds of explosives and little else other than what was needed to fly a plane. Additionally, it was required that these aircraft would be made almost exclusively from wood, as metal was an incredibly valuable resource and had to be conserved as much as possible. So, to create this absolute beast of an aircraft, the Yokosuka Naval Air Technical Arsenal was contacted to lead its development, and the Mizuno Corporation was tasked with the actual creation of the glider. While the technical arsenal took all the way until May 1945 to settle on an overall design scheme, Mizuno had already been working on their own design and was nearly finished with it. Their design, due to the very concept of what the glider was, was incredibly bare-bones and simplistic, featuring just a single seat with the electronics it needed to fly, a short rectangular wing, a rectangular tail, and three rocket boosters. Conceptually, it was supposed to be incredibly easy to fly, even for those with little to no flying experience. The reason for this was that the Japanese envisioned new recruits or even everyday citizens flying these gliders, sacrificing themselves for the war effort. In such a desperate situation, all able bodies would be needed and thrown into the conflict with little to no training. Mizuno would submit their design prototype to the technical arsenal around May 1945, and after the arsenal reviewed it and sent back their required design changes, Work on a prototype for the now-designated Jinryu glider would begin in mid-June 1945. Because of the mostly wood construction and the fact that Mizuno put all of their focus and effort into the project, two prototypes for the Jinryu would be completed by mid-July 1945, before the arsenal had even finished their initial wind tunnel testing on scale models. That same month, the Jinryu would first take to the air for the first time, 
not under its own power, mind you, but by being towed by another aircraft. In this initial test, only testing its gliding ability, the test pilot noted that it handled quite well at low speeds and was easy to fly. However, the Jinryu was supposed to be a kamikaze plane, diving into enemy tanks and ships, so this rather basic gliding test meant rather little in the grand scheme of things. A dive test would be the first real test, and when they tested that, they had a problem. When the pilot started the dive, when the Jinryu reached around 186 miles an hour, it began to vibrate. It began to vibrate so much, in fact, that the pilot couldn't actually read the flight gauges. He then proceeded to pull up to slow it down, which immediately solved the issue. So, for a plane that would be a kamikaze dive bomber, its handling worsened as it was in a dive, which was not optimal. The reason behind this was believed to be that the tail was not properly reinforced, nor was the tail's vertical stabilizer large enough. Both of these were changed, and wind tunnel testing of these changes would prove successful. Testing on the Jinryu would then proceed on to powered flight. The idea here was that three Toku Ro 1 Type 1 rockets would be attached to the body and would burn for about 10 seconds apiece, enough to get it airborne a few hundred feet off the ground. While these Type 1 rockets were being ground tested, one member of the project, a Major Suganuma, began to express his doubts about the Jinryu. It would be discovered that the rockets they were using were not of good quality and were thus prone to failure and were inconsistent in their overall burn times. Additionally, Suganuma didn't believe that the Jinryu would be a good aircraft for kamikaze missions as the improvements they had to make to increase stability also made it a bit more difficult to fly. Considering that it was likely that amateurs would be flying these things, that simply wouldn't do. As a result, Suganuma would form a different team and would split the Jinryu off into a new direction. While the Jinryu would continue as it was, Suganuma would embark on a variant known today as the Shinryu or Shinryu-2, a rocket-powered interceptor. Now, for the name Shinryu, it is entirely possible that this interceptor wasn't actually named Shinryu. The name for it, the Shinryu or Shinryu-2, is the name used today, but in reality, the name Shinryu comes directly from a different reading of the name Jinryu. In Japanese, the symbols for Jinryu can be read as Shinryu, which has led to the Interceptor Project simply being named the Shinryu, or Shinryu-2. It is entirely possible that the Shinryu was not actually called the Shinryu, but we don't know, and for this video, and for all intents and purposes, let's just call it the Shinryu. So anyway, the Shinryu would drastically alter the original Jinryu design to a much more complex-looking canard wing design. The overall design was very similar to another Japanese interceptor project from around the same time, the J-7W Shinden, and it was also similar to the American XP-55 and the Italian S-4. In some respect, its design was actually a pretty common experimental design around that time. What made the Shinryu different from them was a few things. For one, the Shinryu featured four Tokuro-1 Type 2 rockets that would power it, as opposed to a pusher-style propeller. Two, the Shinryu featured these little retractable spoilers in the wings that would ideally give the pilot better control. Three, it didn't have wheels. Instead, it had retractable skids that would be deployed on landing. For the plane to actually take off, it would sit on a wheeled dolly or cart, and once airborne, that cart was released. And four, it was to be a high-altitude interceptor and was thus to be equipped with a pressurized cockpit, or failing that, a pilot with a pressurized suit. The plane was to be going after these high-flying B-29s after all, so that pressurization was necessary. Overall, this is how the Shinryu would work. 
on the ground, two of the four rockets would fire and deliver around 30 seconds worth of thrust, ideally enough to get it well into the air. Then, the other two rockets would be fired to get the Shinryu into attack range of the target, likely a B-29. Once in range, the Shinryu would attack with eight unguided rockets located alongside the rear landing skids, four of them under each wing. It is also possible that the Shinryu could have been outfitted with cannons or machine guns, but that does not appear to have been the intention. After the attack, the Shinryu would glide back down and safely skid down, ready to be restocked and relaunched. Now, as the Shinryu was an offshoot to the Jinryu Kamikaze Glider, this does raise the question of whether or not the Shinryu was also to be a Kamikaze plane. It is speculated that the Shinryu would also carry an explosive charge in the nose that would detonate on impact. So, if the rockets were fired and the target still survived, either by absorbing that blow or the rockets just missing, the pilot could then just crash the plane into the target and deliver a blow that way. However, judging solely off the plane's design, I do think it's safe to say that the Shinryu was not to be a kamikaze aircraft at all. If we compare it to other designated kamikaze aircraft from around the same time, namely the Jinryu, the Oka, and the Ki-115, those planes were made incredibly simply and were to be as bare bones as possible. Made mainly of wood and a little bit of steel, those planes had little else than their method of propulsion and an explosive charge. The Jinryu and Oka had no landing gear apart from maybe some takeoff skids on the Jinryu, and the 115 would jettison its wheels mid-flight. These planes didn't need landing gear, they were going to be destroyed, so it would make no sense for the Shinryu to have those landing skids if they intended to destroy it anyway. Plus, the Shinryu was to have a pressurized cockpit. Having that meant that each Shinryu plane would take extra valuable resources to produce, resources they could ill afford to lose. So, based on those factors alone, it would have made absolutely zero sense for the Shinryu to be a kamikaze aircraft. Now, that doesn't mean it may not have been used as one, you could say that for any plane in existence, really, but the intent behind the design seems to be that they wanted to keep using it. Ultimately, though, we may never truly know, because unlike the Jinryu, the Shinryu was never made. While the idea of it and the general design does exist, Japan never got the chance to make the Shinryu because Japan would surrender before any work on it could begin. Recall that the Jinryu first took to the air in mid-July 1945. The atomic bombs would be dropped on Japan the next month on August 6th and 9th, and Japan would announce their surrender on August 15th. From the first flight of the Jinryu, Japan had all of a month to work on the Shinryu, basically enough time to formulate the idea and maybe get some sketches done. No wind tunnel models were made, and no prototype was ever started on. As for the Jinryu, a total of five glider prototypes would be made, but the end of the war, combined with the Jinryu's faulty rockets, meant that those rockets would never actually be attached to the Jinryu, and it would never fly under its own power. Before they surrendered, Japan would seemingly destroy all existing Jinryu aircraft, and likely destroyed a good deal of documentation on both projects. Just a handful of very grainy photographs of the Jinryu are known to exist, and the Shinryu exists merely in model and digital form. As a result, the entire Mizuno Jinryu slash Shinryu project remains rather shrouded in mystery, and in all likelihood will continue to be for the foreseeable future. And on that note, I think we'll go ahead and end for today. So, thank you all for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Going back to the Yakuza games I mentioned from the beginning, uh, you should play them. They're great. They're half completely serious and half ridiculously stupid. Start with Yakuza 0, the prequel, and work your way up from there.
do note that 3, 4, and 5 can be a little slow at times. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned something. So, see ya!